Since our scripture is uh, very long, you probably would want to sit. Be seated. And our scripture is from Judges chapter 6, verses 1 to 24. Hear the word of God. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded their country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the God of the Amorites in whose land you live. But you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak and Orpha that belongs to Joash, the Abazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But Sarah Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But, Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I'll be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, If now I've found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that, is really, that it's really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephod of flour he made bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. With the tip of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he explained, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands in Orpha of the Abazites. We thank you, Lord, for this reading of your holy word. Amen. Today, when we have babies, we pick names for them simply as labels to keep them separated from the other children's uh, names so we can pick them out. Imagine the confusion if you had a room full of babies and every one of them was named Mary and a nurse was told, go in and give Mary your medical treatment. She'd have a hard time picking up which Mary is it. Sometimes parents pick out popular names for their children. And we did that for our second son, whose name is Matthew. And, and we didn't realize how popular that name was that year. When he went to school, it seemed half the kids, half the boys in his class were named Matthew. For 2012, the most popular names for girls were Sophie, Emma, Olivia, 
Isabella, Ava, Lily, Zoe, Chloe, Mia, and Madison. And the ten most popular names for boys were Aiden, Jackson, Eden, Liam, Mason, Noah, Lucas, Jacob, Jaden, and Jack. Parents give their children uh, names to express what kind of a person they would like their child to, to belong to. And when I went to school, uh, I was told it, you, you had to have a name that came out of the Bible. And so that's how I, uh, when I write down, my, my parents named me Don, but they said that's not a real name, you have to be called Donald. And then when they said, no, 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 he's not Donald, it's Don, I had to be called Don Michael. So at least Michael's uh, a name in, in the Bible. And I was kind of grateful because all the kids were calling me Donald Duck. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I hated that, that name. Do you know that when God calls people to a special service, he often changes their name? Think about Abram. When God called him, he changed his name to Abraham. Sarai was his wife, and he changed her name to Sarah. And their grandson, Jacob, when he was called, his name was changed to Israel. And in each case, God desired a name that reflected the character that, that he wanted uh, them to reflect. And you also realize that in the book of Revelation, it says that when we come before God in heaven, Jesus is going to give us a new name. Well, today in scripture, we meet a boy whose parents named him Gideon. And Gideon means mighty warrior. And Gideon, uh, God appeared to Gideon and called him, live up to your name. Israel had great troubles in, in the time of the judges. The people had fallen away from God, much as people in our day and age, they're falling away from God. And those people worship Baal and Ashtaroth, and we call, we have all these pagan gods today, we don't even uh, know their names. Gideon's own father made a pagan altar to Baal. Uh, so Gideon, however, knew it was wrong to worship false gods. But he shrugged his shoulders, and what can I do? And he just tried to survive like everyone else. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, and he praised Gideon for the job that he, God had called him uh, to do. Now, if an angel appeared to you and told you to tear down your father's altar, what would you do? Well, we read, when Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he explained, alas, sovereign Lord, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace, don't be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. Note that altar. He called it, the Lord is peace. In the Old Testament, Believers built altars to commemorate significant events in their life. And we read Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all building altars as memorials to God's appearance and calling. And I want to ask you today, have you ever built an altar? Our altars aren't made with stone or earth, but we do have special remembrances when God we encountered God in a special way, and he changed us. Altars are only set up to God, the true, one true God, because only the true God is worthy of an altar. And an altar for us might be a Bible verse that you memorized, or uh, some place that has, has special meaning in your life where you encountered God. And I've heard many people, uh, that's why we should be getting our kids interested in going to summer camp because I heard many, many times up at Westminster Highlands or Lambeck or uh, Seneca Hills Bible Camp, people having special experiences uh, with, with the Lord. We Presbyterians don't have altars, but we do have a communion table where Christ meets us in a very special way. And because Christ died on the cross, the altar that we have is the cross, and that's why it's very appropriate that the new door has a, has a cross in it. Jesus Christ used the cross as an altar, offering himself 
for our sins. Once and for all on Calvary. But before Calvary, people set up altars to remind themselves of God's presence with them. Well, Gideon set up an altar and he called it Yahweh Shalom, where God is peace. Do you know the word peace is used in the Bible 369 times? And 282 of those times are in the Old Testament. Peace is a very important part of our relationship with God. We all remember not too long ago at Christmas singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. God's peace is very different from man's peace. Peace is not just the succession, the stopping of a war. Peace is the presence of Christ in our lives. And Gideon knew that Israel was never going to have peace until they turned back to God. And that's why the angel said to Gideon, Peace, don't be afraid, you're not going to die. God called Gideon to help his nation Israel, which was desperate for peace. This period of the judges was a very violent time. Israel had turned away from God, and God turned them over to the Midianites. And the Midianites were the superpower of that day. They were the first to use camels as uh, instruments of mass destruction. They would get on their camels and race through the, uh, the land, killing and robbing, stealing people's food and their gold and even their God. And the Israelites turned to worship Baal. Gideon's father set up an altar to Baal. Maybe it was because he was afraid of Midian. He thought it pleased him and they wouldn't rob him. But the Midianites uh, continued to rob and, and destroy Israel. And these camels that they used could travel long and far without water. And they would steal and plunder and kill. And the Israelites were defenseless against them. And we read after seven years, and it's so shocking that it took seven years for these Israelites to turn back to God. We, we read, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And God answered by appearing to a boy named Gideon, the son of a farmer. And where was Gideon? He was hiding in a wine press, threshing grain, hiding from the Midianites. And notice the title, an angel of the Lord visited Gideon. Gideon. And Gideon soon learns that this angel is actually God in human form. It's called a theophany, a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. And here's what the angel of the Lord says, Yahweh's with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon immediately becomes defensive. But, sir, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Now the Lord's abandoned us and put us in the hand of Midian. But God said to Gideon, I'll be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites together. So Gideon wants to set up an altar, and he goes to prepare a meal to put on this altar of the Lord. Perhaps, maybe he was even secretly hoping that maybe when he got back, it took a while to cook the goat and make the bread, that maybe God would have forgotten about him and went to someone else to, to uh, stand up against the Midianites. But when he arrived, there was the angel waiting for him. And the angel says, drown that meal in broth and put it on the rock. And then the angel took the staff and touched the rock, and immediately fire came out of the rock and consumed the whole meal. And then the angel suddenly vanished before Gideon's eyes. And Gideon then knew that he was in the very presence of God and that his life would never, ever be the same. And so he called that altar Yahweh Shalom, or, the, or God is peace, because the angel said, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Can you imagine yourself if you were Gideon in those circumstances? We all have things that we're, we're afraid of. We all have fears and doubts. And sometimes we even doubt God's promises, and we say, God, where are you? And we get discouraged. And then we start the pity party. I'm too weak to do anything to help myself. That's a time to turn to God. 
God meets us at the point of our greatest need and the point of our greatest longing. But notice how God works in our life. He's like the prodigal father whose son goes off on his way and he lets him go off and experience what life without him is like. And whenever we, like the prodigal son, get sick and tired of our sin and rebellion, God offers, come back to me and I will be your peace. God won't affirm us in our disobedience and he won't give us peace while we're walking the sinful path and worshiping Baal. When we choose to walk in darkness, we're going to forfeit fellowship with, and peace with God. And listen to what the New Testament says about this in 1 John. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and don't live by the truth. So to have peace with God, we must walk with God of peace. Israel, they've decided they're going to abandon God and go walk with Baal of the Midianites. And after seven years, they grew sick of their sin. And they cried out, they prayed out, and God sent them Gideon. Not because he was strong, but because Gideon was weak. All that Gideon had to do was to be obedient to God. And here's how 1 John in the New Testament continues. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And that's what Gideon did. He immediately set out to gather Israel together, starting with his own father. Gideon's heart came alive when he realized that God was not dead, or God had not abandoned them. God hadn't even ceased to love them or care about them. The God of peace was with Gideon. And do you know peace comes not from where you are, but where who you're with. Peace comes with the right relationship with God and Christ. And we can't expect to find peace any other way but by walking with the Lord. And God will allow turmoil and disappointment in our lives as long as we turn away from him. That's why in John chapter 16, Jesus says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So peace comes by walking with Christ. When life seems overwhelming, walk with God. When we grow sick of our sins, come back to God. He provided the sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And he made it possible for a humble boy named Gideon to conquer the enemy of Israel, Midian. But notice what God, you'll have to read further on your own and judges what happens. God gives him two difficult tasks to do. One is destroy his father's altar. His father evidently was the leader of a religious cult that worshipped Baal. And then God says, get an army and go fight Midian. And then when Gideon got the army, he says, that army's too big. And they kept cutting it down and down. And then when they came time to fight the Midianites, he sent them off not with swords and shields, but with torches and broken pots to defeat them. And that was to show them that the victory wasn't Israel's victory, it was God's victory for Israel. And that's the way God works in our lives as well. That uh, not God gives us the victory not so we can feel good about ourselves, but because he's present with us. That's how he brings us peace, by knowing that God is with us. And we won't find peace apart from Jesus Christ, who's called the Prince of Peace. We know we have peace when we know who we belong to. So listen again to this scripture. Peace. Do not be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are peace. And that you brought peace to the world by sending your Son.